morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, December 24th, 2018. Merry Christmas Eve to everybody out there. I am Dave Biddle. I'm very happy to be joined by Bill Bank Green. Bank, let's get right into it. Justin Fields, what are you hearing? Do you think it's very likely he will end up at Ohio State? Just let the listener know what you're hearing about uh, Justin Fields. Yeah, I think it's as close to being done as it can be without Justin and Ryan Day uh, conversing yet, which I think will happen after the bowl game. Um, I think this is a – I don't – you know, you hate to say done because they're right up to the line now, and that conversation may not go well when Ryan Day and Justin Fields actually – Justin Fields should be visiting Ohio State. He and Ryan Day should sit down and discuss philosophy, strategy, how they see the kid's career going. I can't believe it won't go well. And I think if it goes well, I think this is going to be over. I think Justin wants to be at Ohio State. I think all the smoke is is real. Um, I think the connection between Justin Fields and Dwayne Haskins through quarterback guru Quincy Avery is real. And I think Quincy Avery's relationship with Ryan Day is real. So I, I think this is, is a go. And I think it's going to happen. But, you know, you hate to call it. Until Justin sees the campus, till Justin and Ryan sit down, and I think that's going to happen real soon. And you know, I think Justin Fields is going to be at Ohio State in the not too distant future. That's fantastic news for Ohio State. So um, if that does happen, um, obviously they can't publicly say we're guaranteeing you the starting spot. But I can't imagine Justin Fields is going to come here. Let's say you're the starter behind closed doors. What happens with Tate Martell in that situation? Do you think? Well, I think Tate will go through spring football because I don't think Justin's going to get a ruling on his eligibility um, for a while. So we don't know how that's going to play out. If Justin Fields comes to Ohio State and is not ruled eligible for next year, Tate has a clear path to the starting job. So his best interest would be stay his third year at Ohio State if Justin is ineligible get his degree, which can be done in three years. You know, the kids that come in early and stay in the summer, it can be done in three years. I don't know where Tate is. Burrow style, yeah. Yeah, and and, and many others. Then you're eligible for two years if you you do leave. But, you know, Dave, what happens next year if Tate's the starter, Justin's ineligible for a year, and Tate goes 15-0 and and wins the national title? That's not out of the question. I mean, that team's going to be pretty good next year. So there's a lot of moving parts here. And if I'm Tate Martell, you know, I, I kind of sit tight, go through spring football, and kind of wait on the Justin Fields eligibility issue. If Justin is named instantly eligible, you battle him. You know, you fight him. Because if, if, if Tate would transfer now without a degree, he is sitting out next year. If he transfers today – or if he transfers on August 23rd, he's going to sit out next year. So he might as well take it as far as he can go. If the kid's instantly eligible, beat him out. Go ahead and beat him out. And if you don't beat him out, and you can see like Joe Burrow did that, well, this just ain't going to happen, then you know he would be in a different situation than Joe because Joe had to go earlier because he was eligible. Well, Tate's going to be sitting out next year anyway if he transfers. So play it all the way up to the night before the first game. So, you know, I think there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, I think all the moving parts are really good for Ohio State. But, you know, let it play out. But I think at the end of the day, I mean, I got some good news on Justin Fields, I mean, way back before signing day. It was like a Monday night, and it was close to midnight, and I was done for the day. And when I got the phone call and, the person I trust told me what they thought was going on. I rushed to my computer, and it's very rare that I rush to my computer at, you know, 10 after midnight to write a story on a kid. But, I mean, that was too good to wait till morning. No doubt about it. Um, Paris Johnson, obviously a um, five-star member of the 2020 class, sounds like he was a little put off that he wasn't told by Ohio State that Urban was planning on retiring. A um, couple weeks have passed, actually you know, more than a couple weeks have passed now, has Ryan Day been able to smooth things over with Paris Johnson? Is he all OSU? Is he still kind of looking around at Notre Dame and other places? No, I think he's kind of looking around. And that's a, that's kind of a byproduct of Meyer resigning. When that relationship 
was more between Paris's mother, Monica, and Urban Meyer. You know, ideally, you'd rather have that relationship be player, position coach. That's the strongest relationship, not player to head coach or mom or dad to head coach. It's the player and the position coach. And when you look at this O-line recruiting, you know, you can go back to calendar year. Um, it's not been great. And a lot of the good kids they've landed, you can point to the recruitment. You know, Nicholas Pettit Ferreira, that was Shauna all the way. You know, with Harry Miller, Urban Meyer played a big part in that. And then, you know, you can look at some of the other ones that didn't go Ohio State's way, and, and, and I think it's concerning. So do I think Paris Johnson will end up at Ohio State? I do. I do. I think it's – I think – for all the reasons that kids choose Ohio State, I think Paris will end up at Ohio State, but I think there could be some drama along the way, and I think he's going to take visits now. I think the door has been opened. Going back to the 2019 class for a second, they obviously have a, you know, a couple more spaces they can fill in February. Um, how many spots do you think they will – how many more kids do you think they'll sign in, I guess, not the late signing period in February? And what's the latest with Doug Nestor? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye? Yeah, I don't know how many they're going to go. I think they can go four or five more. And a lot depends on these early NFL guys. I don't think they know yet on a couple of these guys. So the number will become more clear once they get done after the bowl game and they know who's coming back, who's not. So that will influence numbers, and we'll know soon after. Doug Nestor, I don't like what I see. I don't like what I hear. Um, to me, he is a fully 100% uncommitted recruit, and Ohio State is going to have to re-recruit him and get him back into the fold. Um, you know, I think Georgia has really made a move on him, and I think Penn State is in great shape for him. So I would look at him as a, a, a 100% uncommitted recruit that Ohio State is going to have to, you know, going to have to land. Speaking of guys that might turn pro, um, might come back, Michael Jordan seems to be one that's kind of on the fence to me. I, I tend to think he'll come back. Um, I don't think his grade's going to be quite what he thinks it should be from the NFL, but you never know. Um, he's a three-year starter. He's now played a year at center, which is a very valuable position. Um, what's your gut feeling, or maybe what are you hearing on Mike Jordan? you think he'll be back next year, or you think he's going to turn pro? You know, I think he's right on the line. History shows that the old linemen usually come back. They usually need – another year of development, another year in the weight room. Um, so if I had to guess, and it would just be a guess, my guess would be that Jordan comes back. Um, I think he had a heck of a year this year. I know a lot of people were critical of him, but I thought he had a heck of a year this year. And I think he's a darn good player. But you just, you know, for a 21-year-old to jump into that NFL, I think it's the hardest position would be O-line. And I think those guys – don't usually go early. And I think Michael Jordan will come back, but it wouldn't shock me if he left. Last thing before I let you go, the Rose Bowl is creeping up on us. Ohio State against Washington, it's not getting much, you know, talk in Buckeye Nation because there's so much other stuff going on with, you know, and it's easy to see why with Ryan Day taking over for a legend and Urban Meyer and all the recruiting and everything else, Justin Fields. Um, you know, Washington, they're not a bad team. I, I looked at it, they've lost three games. They've lost to some teams they shouldn't have lost to, but, they, they've lost three games by a total of ten points this year. So you know, all three of their losses have been very close games. They've got a good defense, veteran quarterback in Browning, veteran running back in Miles Gaskin, a good head coach in Chris Peterson. I think the Buckeyes are going to be fine. Don't get me wrong out there, Bucknutters, but Bill Green, what do you think about this game? you think the Buckeyes are going to take care of business and then some? you think this could be a close game? You know, for me, when I break down numbers, you know, and I tend to look at things differently than most other people, um, I usually take the emotion out of everything and just look at how I think the matchup works. And I think I think Washington State, with their speed, can do some things to Ohio State offensively that Maryland did, that Purdue did. And I think defensively they can do some things to Ohio State kind of similar to TCU. But then when you throw all that stuff out, you know, the fact that Ohio State is one of the highest penalized teams in football – very high mistake team. Washington State, low penalty team, low mistake team, smart team, well coached. I just think you throw all that out. This is Urban Meyer's last game. And, Dave, I mean, I think you'd probably agree with me. I mean, can you see at the end of that beautiful sunset 
out there in California. Urban Meyer walking off that field as a loser in his last game. I just don't see it. And I think that's probably going to be my feeling on this game is there's no way those guys let Urban Meyer walk off that field a loser in his last game. And that's, again, that kind of gets your your heart, thinking with your heart in this stuff. And that usually gets you in a lot of trouble when you're picking games or if you're betting on games, you know. And But I think this is probably the one time that I would probably let myself be swayed by – you know, sentiment, and, and I do not see Urban Meyer losing that game. Whether Ohio State wins by one or whether they win by 41, I think it's I think Ohio State will win. And But like I say, my head thinks it's a great matchup. I think teams that are pass-only teams, one-dimensional team like Ohio State, can't run the ball, very pass-dependent. I don't think that month off helps them at all in terms of timing, and they had it rolling. I mean, they really had it rolling at the end of the year. I think they would have rather played that Rose Bowl seven days after the Northwestern game. So we'll see. I mean, my final thought is there's no way those 85 scholarship players let Urban Meyer walk across that field and shake hands with Chris Peterson on the wrong end of the scoreboard. I'm with you, my friend. I can't picture it either. I think Urban's going to go out with a win. Um, What a way for him to go out. Pretty much the next best thing to going out with the national championship. That would obviously be the best way to go out. But this, he's never coached in the Rose Bowl. This would be, he grew up revering this game, of course, like any Ohio State fan grows up revering the Rose Bowl. Um, So this is a perfect way for him to go out. I'm with you. I think he's going to go out with a W. Uh, Great stuff from Bill Bank Green here on Christmas Eve. Really appreciate you joining me, Bank, and appreciate all listeners out there for tuning into the show. appreciate that as well. Hope everyone has a great day and a great Christmas tomorrow. Let's hear the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. 